Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. A new drone act in Congress. Yes, yet another one. We have Loft adding SGI support. The DAC recommends a change in stadium TFRs. And then lastly, a new DGI Agress. Let's get to it. First off is the soon to be proposed Drone for First Responder Act. Uh, not to be confused with DFR, Drone as First Responders, which is actually something that's uh, useful. Unlike this bill introduced by Elise Stefanik, a New York Republican, uh, she was the one behind the proposed DJI full ban that we discussed a few weeks ago that a lot of you uh, responded to. So you know that we're in good, capable hands here. The new act aims to transition public safety operation away from Chinese-made drones by increasing tariffs, also by providing grants to purchase US-made drones, also to set a limit on when imported drones must not contain Chinese drone parts, which would be in 2030, and then also to provide grants to US manufacturers. Now, there's no word on if US manufacturers will be able to produce the same amount of drones and what will happen if production is limited. The act also claims that uh, drones that are manufactured in China have a risk for potential data vulnerability. So I'm gonna ask the same question that I've been asking for the last few years where nobody's apparently able to give an answer. Uh, if they are a threat, why are we allowing them to be used for the next six years under this proposal and many other proposals? Now, keep in mind, this is not a bill just yet, nor a legislative proposal. Uh, it's just uh, gonna be subject to change, hopefully. Uh, we don't have the bill text at this time, so we'll let you know when we hear more, but you can read the article down in here for more information. Second story this week, Aloft has added automated SGI waiver request into air control. Now, in case you don't know what an SGI waiver is, it stands for Special Government Interest. Uh, SGI waivers allow for public safety operation and other UAS operators to fly an emergency operation that may require entering a no-fly zone or a restricted area, or even to fly beyond visual line of sight. Now, to get an SGI waiver, a department or the operator has to call the FASOSC uh, department. Uh, a loft air control is now approved to provide these waiver as needed. Uh, this should actually help public safety agencies a ton and those that operate as volunteers. So uh, thank you a lot for doing that. Next up is the Drone Advisory Council, a council that uh, Pilot Institute is actually a part of, along with other members, including Olaf, we just talked about them, and a few others, and uh, recommending changes to stadium TFRs. Uh, stadium TFRs actually, believe it or not, close over 125,000 square miles of airspace every year, and they impact thousands of legitimate UAS operations. Now, I've talked about this in a lot of different um, shows and videos, the fact that uh, the st uh, stadium Stadium TFRs are very difficult to actually uh, find because they're not published. Every single one of them is not published. There's one single NOTAM that publishes for all of the different games, sporting events that happen. Now the DAX recommendation includes a drone specific TFR that would actually limit to the fence line of the stadium, reducing the restriction by 99% to just 11 square miles. Uh, that would be much easier for operators to actually uh, know that these are going on, but not only that, obviously, it would reduce the size, let's say you're two or three miles away from a stadium, you might not even know you're two or three miles away from a stadium. And not only that, that there is actually a game going on at that time. So you could get in trouble without even knowing that you are in a TFR because it's not published directly on the chart. So we're hoping that these changes uh, will help. Now, keep in mind, this is just a uh, proposal that is being done to the FA. We don't have regulatory power, but we hope that uh, somebody listens and makes some changes. Last up, DJI is continuing to release new drones. This is a slightly bigger drone than we usually talk on this show, but uh, the Agress T25 and the Agress T50 were released this week. Along with these new Agress, DJI released Smart Farm, and no, it's not one of those uh, games on your phone, uh, which allows for plot, plot management and also daily operation. Uh, the new T50 comes with active phase array radar, a four sprinkler kit, and a nine minutes fast charging batteries. That's right, nine minutes fast charging batteries. That's uh, pretty crazy for a drone that size. The T50 has either a maximum payload of 50 kilogram of spreading payload or 40 kilogram of spray payload and can spray 50 acres per hour. Uh, we'll keep you updated if we see more from DJI, but that's uh, it's a big drone. All right, that's it. You have a great weekend and we'll see you next week on Monday for the live. And then also a 40 kilogram of spreading payload